Hello, this is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to episode 12 of Exploring Joomla 3.x. In this episode, we're going to step away from our site module um, to look at uh, some other things. And this episode, I call Joomla Updates, Upgrades, and Extensions. Oh my! Uh, let me give you a little background. Uh, usually, before I start a tutorial on my development machine here, I will open up a terminal and I will do uh, uh, an, an update and an upgrade to make sure that any OS uh, updates have been applied to the machine. And uh, if you've never done that, you can open a terminal by hitting Control T, and, or you can go to Dash or whatever, and then the commands are sudo apt update, and then you hit enter, it will read the list of software, uh, well, after you put in your sudo password, and then after it reads this um, list of software, you can put in sudo apt, get, um, apt upgrade, and that will apply any changes. So after doing that, <clears throat> Um, I went to the back end of my Joom Dev site um, to probably get something set up and ready to go and uh, everything looks normal I log in as admin and admin you guys know how this works and then bang I get all these ugly notice messages and I see that they're coming from the mod menu um, module from the Joomla backend that normally puts the menu up here and you see I can't scroll or do anything so you know what what do I do you know if if uh, if you've been programming a while um, and are familiar with PHP and, and um, Joomla and and Apache the fix to this probably seems pretty easy but I'm guessing that there might be a couple of you who are using this platform as just as a learning tool and uh, may maybe thinking oh man well, what do I do now so first of all let's talk about where th where does this notice come from well you remember way back in episode one we set up a uh, lamp server on Ubuntu uh, to do our development and uh, while we were doing that we went into the PHP INI file and uh, we turned the error reporting up to as high as we could get it and the reason why we wanted that was we, we want to be able to find any coding errors or mistakes or things like that to, to make us better programmers and, and, and to have a stack trace to see what's going on and, and that sort of thing so um, I'm thinking that if we turn off the notice error since that's what we're getting here now a notice um, um, as defined by PHP manual is, is uh, basically it says you know hey you've got um, um, uh, this, this indicates that the script encountered something that could indicate an error but also happens in a normal course of running a script so it means the application should still run um, but what you're doing it either looks like an error or it might be okay which seems really circular to me so it's uh, let's just throw that out so let's uh, let's uh, start um, into trying to solve this by getting rid of the notice errors and see what happens so I'm going to open up a terminal and I'm going to do that by pressing control alt and T on my keyboard and then um, we're going to edit the php.ini file uh, and change the error reporting um, so that it does not show the notice error so we need to sudo nano that's the editor I'm going to use and the file we want to edit is etsy slash php slash 7.0 slash apache slash php.ini then we hit enter here and then of course this is a pseudo command so I have to enter in my password okay and we bring up the file now that's a pretty long file and I don't want to have to scroll through all of it so we're going to do we're going to use the search feature of nano which is called where is and you'll see it down here I don't know if you can write down here and that is accessed by control W so I'm going to press control W a search box comes, box comes up and what we're looking for is error reporting now if I just put in error underscore reporting that will come up um, to the first instance of that so I'm going to refine it a little bit and put a space and equals because that's where it should be defined so I'm going to hit that and sure enough we come to the line that says error reporting equals E all so we turned on all possible errors so what we're going to do here is we're going to come to the end of this line and we're going to append onto this an ampersand and and then this tilde which means and not this one so and the one that we don't want to use is e underscore notice 
Okay, so the saying, report me all errors, uh, but don't report the notices to me. Okay, now to save this, I'm going to press Control X, and it says, do you want to save the modified buffer? Yes, we do. And do you want to write it to this file? I do, so I'm going to press Enter. So now that we've updated the PHP INI file, it won't uh, take effect until we restart Apache. So we're going to do a sudo service because we want to re restart the Apache service. The service we want to restart is Apache 2 and we want to restart it. So this will hang here just for a second and then when the prompt comes back we know that the service was restarted. So now let's, uh, let's go back to Joomla here in the back end and I'm just going to hit refresh and voila everything looks good so turning the notices off uh, helped so um, if you have been following these uh, videos sequentially you'll notice in uh, probably the last uh, or maybe the time before last on the module um, tutorial that there was an update available for Joomla and I said well we'll cover updates later so we're gonna cover that now it so happens that uh, the uh, when we started this uh, adventure, we, we installed Joomla 2.5.1, and uh, shortly after that, 3.6.0 come out, and 3.6 uh, offers uh, some other functionality. We, we might cover that in a different video of what it has to offer, but more importantly, it fixes um, some of the code so that these notice errors do not show up. So we're going to um, install this, and it's uh, with... Um, with uh, Joomla it's uh, very very easy we're just gonna hit the uh, one click install uh, or upgrade which is this update now button so we're gonna click that and then we get this um, notice here uh, by the way we're getting this basic statistics because I done a new install of 251 so let's just ignore that so um, it tells me that uh, it there was an update found so let's we're going to click this here and install this update and this is going to take some time. Uh, when the update's done, we'll be notified. Um, really, the only thing I have to say is that uh, you know I started using Joomla during the 1.5 days, and then I had to migrate to to two, and it was uh, 2.5, and it was a bit of a, uh, an effort to migrate to three. Um, but uh, since then they've in introduced these uh, one-click uh, upgrades and updates and it's pretty nice. So anyway, when it's done, we'll get this um, notice here. It says Joomla version update status. It says your, si your site has been successfully updated. Your Joomla version is now 3.6. So I'm just going to go back to the control panel and everything is looks pretty good. And if we look down here in the bottom right-hand corner, sure enough, we're at 3.6. Um, so, but did that really take care of our problem. So let's find out. Let's go back and edit our PHP INI file again and turn the error level reporting way back up and see what happens. So I'm just going to use the up arrow for the command history till I get back to my uh, pseudo nano uh, for the PHP INI file. I'm going to hit enter. So we're back in the file again. We're going to do that search which was control W. We're looking for error underscore reporting space equals and there you see we are e all and e notice so now we're going to remove the ampersand and the tilde and the e notice so that we just have e all on the line so we're going to exit the file yes we want to save the buffer and press enter to save to the php.ini file and of course you know if we um, change, make a change to Apache or PHP, we have to restart Apache, so sudo service Apache to restart. And press enter here. Okay, the prompt has come back and uh, we should be good. So I'm gonna just hit this again. So it looks like there's no errors. Let's, uh, let's log out and let's log back in. Mine was admin and admin. And sure enough, so the upgrade to 3.6.0 fixed the notice errors for us, and we have the notices turned back on. Um, so let's uh, let's talk about uh, an extension now that I think would be very handy. You know, we should uh, we should uh, back up um, 
uh, are, are Joomla sites, right? I mean, for a number of reasons, right? You can recover from a hacker uh, if somebody gets you, or maybe a hard disk crash, or, or if you're anything like me, you might recover from screwing something up with the Joomla core files because, you know, I was rooting around in there and mucking with something I probably shouldn't have been, trying to figure out how it works and, and destroyed something. Um, so we need a we need an easy way uh, to do a backup and restore to our, our Joomla website. And uh, so that's what I'm going to talk about now. And fortunately for us, uh, there's some folks out there that's created an awesome extension, right, that will do just what we want, and it's called Akiba Backup. And if you're not familiar with it, um, hang out here, and we're going to go through and, and show how to install it and, and do a backup. So you can get Akiba Backup by going to uh, https colon slash slash www dot akiba a k e e b a backup dot com and when you get there you'll land at their uh, the, their home page and they actually have quite a few products and, and these are pretty nice I've used Akiba backup for Joomla and I've used Akiba, Akiba kickstart which is used for restoring a backup um, to your server uh, extensively. I've not used uh, any of these other ones, although I think I might check this ticket system and see what that's about. Okay, so to get uh, Akiba Backup, get the extension, we're going to click on uh, this panel here, Akiba Backup for Joomla. And when we do that, it takes, it to, takes us to their Akiba Backup page. And what we want to do is download the core. In this case, it says download core 5.1.2. Now, depending on how long this video has been out there, you know, this might be a higher version. So it doesn't really matter. Just get the newest version that's offered here. We're going to click this. And the browser is going to offer to save it. So we're going to save this file. And when it's done, you will be notified by the blue arrow up here. So now, if you have never um, changed the default behavior of, of Firefox, your download will be in the Downloads folder. And sure enough, there we see it, PLG Akiba 5.1.2 core.zip. And this is the file that we want to install into Joomla. So let's go back to the back end of Joomla, and let's go to Extensions, Manage, Install. We're going to browse for this. Now, this is in the Downloads folder. I'm already there, and it's the plugin, Akiba. I'm going to open that, and then we're going to upload and install. Uh-oh, we got an error. So let's, let's see what this was. So there was an error uploading this file to the server. The maximum PHP file upload, uh, upload size is too small. Okay, so what this tells us is that uh, uh, our PHP uh, settings uh, set to uh, where we can't upload uh, the file that that the file size max uh, the upload max file size in the INI file is smaller than the file that we're trying to upload. So let's uh, let's go over here and take a look at this, and we'll do a properties here. And well, this is 2.3 meg, so our our setting in PHP must be smaller than that. So let's go take a look. And there are two settings in. Uh, PHP that can affect this and if we go back to the Joomla install we see that it's the upload max file size this determines the maximum size file that you can upload using PHP and then there's another one called post max size and post max size is the maximum amount of data that you can send across a HTTP, uh, HTTP post okay you remember there's a post and there's a get so those are the two uh, settings that could affect this. So let's go take a look. We're going to go back to the terminal and we're going to open the php.ini file uh, for editing. And we're going to do a search. And what, what we're going to search for first is this post max size. We're going to type post underscore max underscore size space equals. And we see that by default that it's set to 8 meg. So 8 meg is obviously much larger than the file size that we're trying to send up. Uh, so we probably don't need to uh, change that one. So we're going to do another search, control W, and we're going to enter in upload underscore max underscore file size space equals. 
Okay, so here we're at that. Ah, so here it is. So this is the maximum allowed size for uh, uploaded files, and we see that it's set at 2 meg. So obviously the extension that we're trying to install, being 2.3 meg, is larger than the 2 meg available. So we're going to change this. I'm going to change it to 8. Okay, and that, that's arbitrary. I'm only doing that because it's the same size as um, as the uh, the uh, the uh, post max size. And so it's just arbitrary. You can put it whatever number that you feel like you need to put in here. But the thing to remember, obviously, that it has to be larger than the largest size file you expect to upload. I guess within reason. So anyway, I'm choosing 8 meg. So I'm going to save this. I want Control X. Yes, I want to save the buffer and enter because that's the file I want to save to. And we've made a change to PHP.ini, so we know that we have to restart Apache for those to take effect. So we'll restart Apache here. Okay, that looks good. So let's go back over here to the back end of Joomla and let's try installing this extension again. So I'm going to hit Browse, select Plugin Akiba, open, upload, and install. Time will tell. Is it going to work? Well, let's see. It's still going. Still thinking. Ha! Ah, so we got an, that a message that the installation was successful. So going in there and changing a PHP uh, setting was able to fix this right up. So um, now that we have the extension installed, well, we would like to do a, um, a backup of the system. So we'll go to Components and Akiba Backup. We just installed it. And we get a message saying, hey, uh, let Akiba Backup configure itself. So since we've never run Akiba before, it wants to kind of optimize the system and take a look. And, and it will do that for you. So we're going to click this Configuration Wizard button. And it's going to go through and it's going to, um, you know, try to figure out the optimal backup systems or backup settings for your system. And while it's doing this, you're advised not to uh, uh, move away from it. Now, you can, after we run this, go in and change different settings uh, for the configuration if you want to. But I found, generally speaking, that the settings are just fine. And... Um, uh, that, you know, they work for me anyway. And But you're welcome, like I said, to go in there and and adjust them as you see fit. So now that uh, it's finished benchmarking, we can either tweak the configuration with this button here. We can schedule automatic backups, which is, is good too, I guess. Uh, maybe more for a production site than a, uh, a development site where you've kind of got control and, and um, you're keeping backups on a regular basis for yourself anyway. And then you have the option, of course, to back up now, which we're going to select this. Now when you hit the Backup Now button, you're presented with a, uh, a little dialog here where you can select a profile. Uh, we, we've not, you'll notice that we only have one. That's the default. Um, you can uh, set up different profiles in the control panel of this application. So we have a short description. Backup taken on July or Friday, July 29th. That's fine. And then a comment. And um, you can put whatever here. I'm just going to put, uh, I don't know, First Backup. Um, of the development server but something here you know to um, you know let you know so maybe you've uh, uh, m modified or installed a component or as a backup before you're trying to uh, do some experiments or something you can at least leave a note here and we're going to tell it to backup now so here you'll see this kind of familiar screen as it backs up it will show you the progress and you do not want to navigate away from the screen Okay, unless you see uh, an error message or something. So when it's complete, we'll get this message here saying that the backup is completed successfully, and then we can either view the log, which will show um, if there, you know, if there are errors or anything like that, or what it's backed up, or you can go to manage backups. Well, we want to manage the backups, <clears throat> and then uh, I think this only pops up the very first time that uh, you you go to manage your backups and say, how do I restore it and there's a couple different ways uh, I use the uh, kick kickstart core um, works very good and I will make another uh, video on uh, doing a restore of your backed up website so just for now we're gonna click got it okay and then we're taken to the list of backups 
So they'll be in here sequentially from newest to oldest, I think, or maybe oldest to newest, I don't know. Um, but anyway, we see, okay, well, this is a backup taken on Friday, and if we mouse over the little um, question mark, that's the comment that we put in. It says this is the profile that we used, and this is how long it took to back it up. Status is good, and this is the size of the backup. So I'm going to click Download here. Now, when you download through a browser, there's a chance that you could uh, corrupt the data, but the server and the browser on the local machine, I don't expect to have those kind of problems, so I'm going to hit download, and it warns me again, hey, downloading the files through your browser can result in certain circumstances to corrupt partial downloads, etc., etc. Well, I'm going to risk it and say OK. So then I get a prompt from the browser to save the file. So when it's done, I'll get the little blue uh, message here showing that it's complete. I'm going to close this little dialog. Now, if again, if you haven't changed the settings of your browser, it should be in the default. So let's go over here and take, I'm sorry, in the downloads folder. Let's go over here and take a look. And we'll go to downloads. And sure enough, here's a folder called site dash, okay, and then all this junk, and then a .jpa. So the .jpa is, is the extension that Akiba uses when it compresses um, your site backup. So these files are named uh, using site dash and then the the name of your site, in my case it's joom.dev, right? And then the date and then a timestamp. So they're all named the same. So we would take this file here and we copy it off to a thumb drive or put it over on a network share or something so that it's safe in case our uh, site blew up we can restore it. Now if you're dealing with uh, you know sites that are out there on the internet and facing the outside world, it probably is not a good idea to uh, download your backup uh, uh, through the web browser. And if you do, you probably should test that backup right away just to make sure that it's good. Um, but if you wanted to download it, let's say directly with uh, you know if you have FTP services or or cPanel or something where you can access it. Uh, let me show you where you can actually find this file on, in Joomla. So as you know, uh, on the desktop, I've got Joomla installed in a Joomdev folder. So this is the root of the web folder. Um, Akiba Backup is an administrator component, so we'll want to go to Administrator, Components, and then we want to look for Com Akiba, which is right here, and then we'll see a folder called Backup. And inside of Backup, there's that file. So this is where your files and logs would be stored for your backups. So at this point it would just be a simple matter of you know FTP in or copying this file down. So um, so you know although we went through the effort of doing a backup of our website uh, using a key backup, you know this does not mean that we're in the clear. Okay, having a backup means absolutely nothing at all unless the backup's tested and it's proved to be good. Otherwise you just got a file that's well just a file. Um, I will cover restoring backups in another tutorial uh, using Akiba's uh, other product called Akiba Kickstart and uh, hopefully um, it'd be pretty simple and straightforward I think it is and I think we'll set up an additional virtual host just to test our backups and just to kind of give us a little more practice in setting up uh, another virtual host because you know maybe you want to do another website so uh, sometimes as developers, you know, we run into issues along the way. You know, for example, you know, the PHP update in Ubuntu uh, seems to have broke Joomla because of the error level that of reporting that we used in the INI file. So it's you know it's good to know how to tackle these problems, and I hope this tutorial gleaned uh, some light on you know how you can go about solving some of these issues. Uh, remember, knowledge is a journey, and sometimes we stop off at unexpected places. And uh, I, I want to thank you again for your support and your patronage of uh, my videos and uh, tutorials on my website at uh, www.myheap.com. If you have any questions, uh, um, please either ask them here on the video uh, or come to my website um, at myheap.com. And then you can uh, reach me through the Contact Us link at the top, uh, which is send me an email that's uh, got... A, uh, a filter on it so it goes to a different folder so I see them right away. Again, if uh, you're following along, you can go to Technology Exploring Joomla 3. Uh, here you'll see the episode guide as I put them out. Uh, the idea here is that uh, you can go through here and see what episodes uh, covered what. There's a brief um, 
description of each episode. Uh, if you're following along with some of the coding portions of it, so if, if we were to go to, let's say, part five of the module, you could download um, the source code uh, at the end that would result from the end of the tutorial uh, here. There's a PDF of the web page that uh, uh, you can use for offline viewing. And of course, if you click the little TV, it will take you to the page with the video where you can play the video to. Um, uh, to watch the uh, episode. So, um, again, um, thank you so much for your patience and, and your patronage. Um, I, I hope this helps you. Uh, it's helped me uh, to learn Joomla a little bit more. I'm a novice programmer myself. Um, so keep at it, and, and, and you'll learn it right away. So in the meantime, have a blessed day.